I used to do locum tenens, meaning I was essentially a travel doctor. So I've been on a lot of flights and all in all, I've had six different, is there a doctor on the plane moments. So I'm gonna go through the 10 most common in-flight medical emergencies and I'll share with you my experiences as we go through them together. Now, first up on the list, very common is fainting, meaning syncope. The most recent in-flight is there a doctor on the plane moment came just a few months ago when I was boarding a plane in Vegas on my way to LA. They made an announcement overhead. About one minute after I took my seat and buckled my seatbelt in, they asked for a doctor on the plane. Please come back to the back of the plane. So I go back there and there's a woman who she was in the bathroom and she went to stand up and she fainted. She passed out. She had syncope. Syncope in general is very common and it's one of the most common medical emergencies that occurs on a plane or during air travel. It can happen for a bunch of different reasons, including dehydration, uh, having low blood sugar, uh, having prolonged immobility, meaning you're not moving around, or the effects of reduced air pressure and oxygen levels in the cabin. Now to prevent fainting, passengers should stay hydrated, eat a light meal before the flight, and move around the cabin periodically. But in this case, the reason why this 55 year old lady fainted was that she was having excessive bleeding when she went to the bathroom. And so when she went to go stand up, she lost consciousness, she fell to the ground. Uh, shortly after falling to the ground, uh, someone sees her, they attend to her. I'm not sure if they lifted her legs up or not initially, but shortly after that, she ends up regaining consciousness. Now, if someone faints, they should be laid down with their legs elevated to improve blood flow to the brain. Now, if someone faints and assuming they have a pulse, if they're awake, if they're not awake, you should check for pulse. So assuming they have a pulse, the first thing you want to do is lift their legs up to make sure that blood flow is getting back to their brain. And because she did regain consciousness shortly thereafter, she tried to convince me to let her stay on the plane because she just wanted to go back home in Los Angeles, which was an hour flight away. But the right thing to do was to get the paramedics to bring her to a local hospital because when you have bleeding to the point of causing you to have a syncopal episode, you need emergent medical attention. Next up is seizures. So seizures, it's a relatively common medical emergency on flights, particularly among people with a history of epilepsy. Passengers with a history of seizures, they should inform the flight crew and carry their medications on them. Five years ago, I was on a flight from New York to LA and there was an 18 year old Korean lady who barely spoke any English and she had her anti-seizure medications in her checked baggage, nothing in her carry-on. Well, guess what? She had a seizure. By the time I was able to get to her, the seizure had already stopped, but she was post-ictal, meaning she had confusion after the seizure. Once she became more lucid, we were able to figure out that her meds were in her checked baggage. And she also didn't know the English name of the medications that she was taking. And I was concerned that she would have another seizure. This was mid-flight. So I asked the flight attendants to make an announcement to ask the passengers on the plane for anti-anxiety medication because anti-anxiety meds also treat and prevent seizures. So I have the flight attendant ask, does anyone have any clonopin or Xanax? And sure enough, half the plane puts their hand up and they say they do. So I go and speak to someone who's willing to donate some of their clonopin and we end up giving some clonopin to our young lady who had the seizure and she didn't have any more seizures for the rest of the flight. If a seizure occurs during a flight, the surrounding passengers should clear the area and protect the person from injury by cushioning their head and removing any nearby objects. Now, once the seizure ends, that person should be placed in the recovery position and medical assistance being sought immediately. Breathing difficulties can occur for many reasons, including pre-existing lung conditions like COPD, in some cases, the reduced air pressure and humidity in the cabin can exacerbate some respiratory issues. Passengers with known respiratory conditions should carry their medications and inform the flight crew of their condition. If someone experiences breathing difficulties during a flight, they should be provided with supplemental oxygen. Sometimes, sudden shortness of breath occurs as a result of a blood clot going to the lungs known as a pulmonary embolism. A pulmonary embolism almost always starts out as a clot in the legs, meaning a deep vein thrombosis. So this blood clot forms in a deep vein, usually within the leg, and is more likely to form when you're sitting still for too long. So long periods of immobility during air travel increases the risk of deep vein thrombosis, DVT, and hence increases the risk of pulmonary embolism. To minimize this risk, 
passengers. You're going to want to stay hydrated and perform in-seat exercises with your legs and try to take a walk to the restroom. This way you promote blood circulation in your legs. Now, compression stockings may also be beneficial. A pulmonary embolism, depending on how big it is, can cause varying degrees of symptoms. The symptoms can be variable. Usually the symptoms, it's gonna be shortness of breath. Sometimes you have chest pain, but sometimes it can lead to dizziness and it can also cause people to syncope, to have uh, loss of consciousness. Chest pain can be a sign of a serious cardiac event, such as a heart attack, or it can result from an aortic dissection. But it can be also due to non-cardiac causes like indigestion or even a muscle strain. Regardless of the cause, chest pain should never be ignored during a flight. I remember another flight that was on in which they asked for a doctor on the plane. This man in his 60s was having sudden onset of chest pain. He was also very sweaty, and I was pretty sure he was having a heart attack. Thankfully, this happened before we took off, and the paramedics were able to get him off the plane pretty quickly. Allergic reactions can range from mild skin irritation to life-threatening anaphylaxis. Passengers with known allergies should carry appropriate medications, including an epinephrine auto-injector, and inform the flight crew of their condition. In the case of a severe allergic reaction, giving someone epinephrine quickly is crucial. Flight attendants are trained to recognize the signs of anaphylaxis and may carry emergency medications like epinephrine on board. Gastrointestinal problems, talking like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, are pretty common during air travel. The only time that I did not wear a seatbelt when the plane was landing was because they called for a doctor to see this young woman who was vomiting and feeling like she was gonna pass out. Well, maybe I think it was a combination of motion sickness from the plane landing, but also uh, she was very dehydrated and extremely hungover from the night before. The plane landed and she was able to walk off without any difficulty, she was fine. Diabetic emergencies. So diabetes, it can cause either high blood sugar or low blood sugar. When you have high blood sugar, that can lead to things like diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA, and that is a medical emergency. But much, much more common is when the blood sugar is too low, hypoglycemia, and that can result in all sorts of bad things. The brain starts to function abnormally, and that can actually lead to coma, and in severe cases, death. So low blood sugar is not to be messed with so this lady i saw they called for a doctor in the plane she was a lady with uh metastatic breast cancer and she did have diabetes and she was feeling confused she eventually um became minimally responsive uh we were able to figure out that her blood sugar was low we did uh, check it at some point and it was low we got her some orange juice and some crackers and uh, that improved her condition pretty quickly and she pretty much snapped out of it not uh, too long after that. What about obstetric emergencies? Thankfully, I had never had to be called for a pregnant passenger experiencing an emergency on the plane. Pregnancy complications during air travel can include preterm labor, miscarriage, or other obstetric emergencies. Now, although most airlines have restrictions on air travel during late pregnancy, emergencies, they can still occur. So if a pregnant passenger experiences pain or bleeding or other concerning symptoms, that's gonna be a very unnerving situation. So when they ask for, is there a doctor on the plane? My recommendation is to see what other doctors and healthcare professionals are on that plane. Most of the times that this has happened to me, there was another doctor or a medical resident or a medical student or a nurse also on that flight. So it's good to have open communication and see what their role is and to work as a team. So most is there a doctor on the plane moments turn out to be nothing serious, but you never know. Sometimes it is a true emergency. Sometimes you need to access the medical kit that they have on the plane and the airline will consult with the physicians on the ground for the best course of action in that moment.